Welcome. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 10th of June, 2024. Thanks for being here. Uh, upcoming calendar is on today's agenda and news and action items and community activity and a few governance topics. Are there any topics that need to be added to the agenda that aren't already on the agenda? Okay, then let's look at upcoming calendar first. So this week, tomorrow, we'll release Jenkins 2.462. Uh, change log edits by Mark Waite because Kevin Martins is ill right now. So I'll, I'll cover that. Um, Wednesday, we release Jenkins LTS 2.452.2. Thanks to Chris Stern for the release lead. The change log and upgrade guide still needs to be reviewed and merged. I should get that done later today. And on the next major events, we've got the CD Mini Summit coming up September 19th in Vienna, Austria. Uh, Bruno plans to be there. Olivier Vernon will be there. And look forward to others if you're interested in attending. Also, DevOps World 2024 has started its planning process. So right now, the planning is tied to this website. Click this sign up for updates page and register if you'd like to have more information. Dates not yet determined, topics, et cetera, but it's already beginning. Any questions on any of the upcoming calendar items? Okay, then let's go to the news part. So Jenkins Weekly will require Java 17 beginning June 18th of 2024. There's been a developer mailing list announcement. The admin monitor now shows the correct date. Uh, Basel is going to create a blog post. And here is this, Basel has created this very nice JVM usage graph that shows comparative usage of various Java versions with Jenkins installations over time. It shows a very nice trend here that Java 17 is increasing significantly it's showing at least as good a growth pattern as java 11 did and as we approach that october 30th end of life for java 11 we're looking very good that we will have have done the right thing for jenkins users to get them onto java 17 and beyond basil was there anything additional you wanted to highlight there yeah so this uh when we started requiring java 11 two years ago we were at the same point as we are now with um, Java 11 almost meeting the Java 8 trend line. So everything in this graph looks consistent with what we've done before. Uh, and obviously requiring Java 17 will accelerate that. Um, and uh, hopefully in a month from now, we'll see it not only meet the trend line, but for 17 to surpass 11. Um, so that, that's all going as expected. Um, I should have the blog post done later today. I'm, I'm writing it right now. And one of the things I've learned when writing these blog posts is to be very clear that you don't have to upgrade your builds to the new version of Java. That's something that people very often confuse. So I'm trying to write that in as clearly as possible. Um, I've learned from past experience that that's something that needs to be clarified up front. Um, sure. this, uh, so I automated the creation of this chart. It's not quite the, the job that I wrote will run every week, but it's not going to change the graph until we get new data from the update center JSON file. And that only comes in once a month. Um, and it's even more confusing than that because it's labeled with, um, it's labeled by month, but using, uh, a date that is by day. So it'll 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 give you this data for like June first or whatever, but um or you know May first, I think is the the latest data that's available. Um but that actually reflects the entire month of May, not necessarily um the beginning of May. Um, um so yeah so and, and that data is only available at the conclusion of the month. So what's showing up right now is showing you um, the data for the month of May. And we won't see the data for the month of June until the very end of June, until July 1st, at which point the graph should update for June. 
um, but it will but it will show a date of June first, um, even even though that will mean the entire month of June. So, uh, if yeah, if you're looking at that job, it was it was confusing for me at first. So, um, but yeah, that's what you should expect going forward from this chart. Thanks. Any questions from others? All right. Thanks. Thanks very much, Basel. Thanks for the work to make this graph auto-generated, and thanks for the clarity on on the data sources and the the potential misperception of dates. There, that's great. So the next next item is that the next Jenkins LTS will continue to require Java eleven. So for three more months, we will do Java eleven based long term support releases. We'll select the that LTS baseline June 26th, and we'll choose a version that does not require Java 17. So it'll be 2.462 tomorrow's or earlier. The idea is we're going, we're not going to change the date when LTS switches to require Java 17. That date remains 30th of October. Next topic was Jenkins and Google Summer of Code 2024. All five projects are running. Uh, Alex, with you here, is there anything you want to highlight on repository permissions, update, or automation? Um, nothing in particular. I think the project is running very well. We have our weekly meetings, and the mentors and mentees are attending. And yeah, everything is working fine so far. Thank you. And I know that Chris Stern, on the project that he's mentoring around permission, around infra statistics, is trying to schedule a session where he can have a conversation with several of us about how that should be laid out. So feels like it's making progress. Bruno, is there anything that you'd like to highlight on Google Summer of Code? Uh, not so much. In fact, as uh, Alex said earlier, uh, even for the other projects, the weekly meetings are up and running. Uh, things are working. We are um, using different means of communication, sometimes it's Slack, sometimes it's uh, element matrix, whatever. But yes, we are slowly uh, getting up to speed and there is no blocker for the time being. The mentees seem to be pretty much excited and we see already uh, some results uh, that are pretty encouraging for most of the projects. So all in all, frankly, I'm super happy the way it's working uh, up to now. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay, action items. So we've got or any questions from others to for Google Summer of Code? Okay, so Basel, create the blog post that you already noted. Um, we had had one on creating attribution entries for the download page relative to sponsors. I think it's perfectly fine that that one waits. It's much lower priority in my mind than the Java 17. Anything you want to share on it, Basel? No, same as last time. Great. And the same as last time on the retire the Chinese Jenkins site, that one is blocked on me and it's going to be a while before I get to it. I want to keep my focus as well on the spring security upgrade in Java 17. Next topic then is community activity. And here I wanted to highlight the contributor spotlight. We have now reached six months of contributor spotlight posts. Yes, that's right. 13 different people have been highlighted in the Contributor Spotlight. This week, it's Vandit Singh. Vandit has been, was a Google Summer of Code 2023 or 2022 contributor who has continued his work in creating the versioned documentation site docs.jenkins.io. Uh, along that same line, Chris Stern, John Mark Mason, and Bruno have brought together an additional idea for recognizing contributors. The, uh, this idea was, was originally seen on the Temerin website where they do a thank a random contributor on that webpage. And so John Mark has provided a data source and Chris Stern has provided a pull request using the data source to provide an up to once a day change to thank a different contributor on a little tiny bar at the bottom of some of our pages. So thanks very much. I think it's a, it's a good creative idea. Next on our spotlight, Alyssa Tong. And future spotlights, Harsh Pratap Singh, a previous uh, GSOC contributor and now a GSOC mentor. 
Rajiv Singh, a GSOC mentor, and Darren Pope, who has done a bunch of great videos. Any questions or comments on community activity? Are we getting closer to launching the version documentation site? We we are. Good question. Let me put some notes in there. So Chris, Chris and I review that pretty much every week in documentation office hours, and and it is making progress. The the progress has changed a little bit. So version documentation site, it's available now at at docs.jenkins.io. So it's already visible. However, it's, and there's a recent content update to sync with, with www.jenkins.io, but there are still a number of issues to resolve before it could replace it. Oh, that's great news. Yeah, it's, it, and it is a, it is actually a very nice experience. I've got to show it to you because the browsing experience and Tora does such a nice job with browsing. So Here's here's the a picker for versions, install documentation navigates really nicely. It is it is really a, a very a very pleasant experience to use the documentation site. Certainly, there are still things that need work, and and we'll need some of Kevin's help to do some reviews on these. But it's looking very very good. Coincidentally, the Jetty project just switched to Antora this week or last week. So we'll be following in their footsteps as well. Cool, very good. Oh, that's great. Well, and and I think I think that Chris and and Vandit and others have been very very happy with with their experience developing on Antora. So it's it's worked great. Chris has a prototype pull request that switches this to do current release and and updates the content. And he and I looked at the preview site with it during Doc's office hours last week. So it it really is progressing very nicely. All right. Good good question. Thanks for asking. Any other questions on version doc site? Okay, governance topics then. The things that I had listed, I think the most most interesting is this required Java 17 and Jenkins Weekly and its follow-on, which is Spring Security 6 upgrade. And, and Basil, I think it's probably best to just let you describe some of these things. Are there things you'd like to highlight as crucial things that are upcoming or things that people need to be very aware are happening? Yeah, um, I should have the JEP Jenkins Enhancement proposal finished uh, this week. And that will include all of the uh, technical details of the design. Um, but yeah, there's going to be uh, sort of this multi-phase approach of first requiring Java 17, which is a prerequisite for upgrading to Jetty 12 EE8. And uh, that itself is a prerequisite for upgrading to Jetty 12 EE9. So we're going to see this happen in a number of phases. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to get to Java 17 as soon as possible, um, because each one of these phases is going to be a substantial upgrade for a lot of users. Um, and we want to mitigate risk by phasing these out gradually over time, rather than all at once. Um, and uh, yeah, the biggest the biggest challenge that we're going to face, I think, is when to start requiring Java 17 for plugin developers um, because there's a tension. Um, it's desirable from a core maintenance point of view to require that sooner rather than later, since there are uh, a number of incompatible changes in the plugin parent palm once we move to Java 17 and Jetty 12. EE8 and again to Jetty 12 EE9. Um, at the same time, um, we don't want to be too aggressive about it because we don't necessarily want to force plugin developers to start requiring uh, a weekly release um, or even the latest LTS release, right? We, we typically give them the option to require fairly old LTS um, when releasing plugins. So 
we're gonna have to find a we're gonna have to find a way to balance these two concerns. And you know what I suspect we'll have to do is compromise on both sides. Um, we might we might have to require um, plugin developers who are relying on the latest weekly to add some extra stuff into their POM file until it's available in the parent um, in order to support older LTS lines in the parent for a longer amount of time. Um, but also we might drop support for older LTS lines sooner than usual, just as we did in Java 11 um, in order to kind of get through this transition. Um, the other option of course is backporting parent POM updates, which that has its own downsides as well. So there's really no good solution that satisfies everyone here. Um, but we're going to have to be mindful of that in the next few weeks or months to try to see where the balance ends up shifting and come up with a good compromise that, that kind of balances all of these concerns. And I, and I think that'll be obvious when we get there. I just don't, I don't have a clear picture of that yet. So that's um, something that when we when we do see a clear picture of that, I'll, I'll most likely have to write another blog post about um, requiring Java 17 for plugin development. Um, just like I, I wrote a similar, I wrote two blog posts for Java 11, one for requiring Java 11 for users and another blog post for um, requiring Java 11 for plugin developers. And that second post was a couple months after the first one. So um, I'm envisioning something similar here where we make a similar announcement sometime after requiring Java 17 for users uh, make to make another announcement for requiring Java 17 for plugin developers. And that's going to have to, we're going to have to decide some of these questions at that point. Great, thank you. Questions from others to Basel. Thanks, Basel, very, very much. The uh, just so everybody's aware, I've been testing a prototype of the Jetty twelve EE nine version that Basel that Basel has created for about two weeks with really good results. I've submitted two bug reports or three bug reports, and Bruno has created an easy to use container containerized version of the same thing based on his work on the Jenkins tutorials. And I've actually used Bruno's setup to do one or two of my bug verifications. So so very nice. Uh, if, if people want to help, by all means, look at the Jenkins tutorials or ping Bruno or me, and we can give you pointers to how you can use that to do a help us do testing. All right, thank you, Basil. So that gives us Java 17 in Jenkins Weekly. Oops, June 18, not June 19. Too many places for dates. And reminder that we will retain the, the Java 11 version. Spring security feels like it's moving. Anything else you wanted to highlight, Basel, in terms of spring security? No, the JEP should cover everything pretty thoroughly. Great. So invite others to re help review that JEP as it arrives. Thanks very much. Next topic then is Azure expense stat status. Thanks to the infra team, our Azure expenses for the CDF portion of the bill was less than 4,400 in May. So we're nicely under budget there. They've accelerated the consumption of the Microsoft donation. So we're, we're using much less on AWS and DigitalOcean right now and will continue that pattern until either the Microsoft donation is completely consumed or August 31, whichever happens first. Uh, thanks to the infra team for being flexible enough to move between cloud providers like that. Uh, we appreciate the donation from Microsoft and are grateful to use it. On the AWS credits donation, we've, oops, I've got the, yes, on the, so, the, we will use continue using the Azure donated credits for now until they are consumed. We'll start consuming AWS credits at least August 31. Now that did lead to a, a, an interesting question from AWS. I've submitted the application to AWS 
asking for another donation. And I asked for the same 60,000 they donated this year for next year. And they came back and said, hey, Mark, uh, what have you, why haven't we seen no consumption of this donation that we've already already given you? And it, okay, I had to explain, look, we have multiple donors and some of them expire earlier. So we have to put the early expiring ones first and we'll start spending AWS's donation beginning in basically September of 2024. And we'll consume that plus DigitalOcean more as we get towards the end of the calendar year. The AWS donation, the current one expires January 31, 2025. Any questions on any of those items? All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thanks very much. Any other topics we need to discuss?